Bienvenidos a todos. Welcome to you all. I am Barbara Jenkins, Superintendent of Orange County Public Schools. Each year, OCPS is proud to observe National Hispanic Heritage Month. As we recognize how various Hispanic and Latinx cultures infuse and enrich American society at large, this year our district joins in celebrating Esperanza, a celebration of Hispanic heritage and hope. Hope is a precious gift we share with our children and with each other. Heritage and culture are among the essential tools for sustaining that hope. Let this video presentation inspire you and bring you hope through lessons of Esperanza. Gracias. Thank you. Hola, soy Johanna López, miembro de la Junta Escolar del Condado de Orange del Distrito 2. Hello, I am Johanna López, Orange County School Board member for District 2. Este año, las escuelas del Condado de Orange se enorgullece de brindar servicios a más de 209 mil estudiantes dentro de nuestras 205 escuelas, de los cuales el 43% son hispanos. In our 205 schools, this year, OCPS is proud to serve more than 209,000 students, with 43% of them being Hispanic. Con la visión de garantizar que cada estudiante tenga un futuro prometedor y exitoso, nos esforzamos para que todos aprendan en ambientes que mejoren su bienestar social y emocional. With a vision to ensure every student has a promising and successful future, we strive for them all to learn in environments that enhance their social and emotional well-being. En alineación con esta visión, valoramos nuestra diversa población estudiantil y reconocemos que la cultura puede ser la base del éxito de uno. In alignment with this vision, we value our diverse student population and recognize that culture can be a foundation for one's success. En el programa de hoy, nos sentimos honrados de celebrar algunas historias de éxito de miembros a nivel nacional, comunitario y del equipo de las escuelas del Condado de Orange de ascendencia hispana y latina como ejemplos esperanzadores para cada uno de nuestros estudiantes. In today's video program, we are honored to celebrate a few success stories from national, community, and OCPS team members of Hispanic and Latinx descent as hopeful example for each one of our students. Hola, soy Josie Medina, directora senior del Departamento de Servicios Multilingües de OCPS. Hello, I am Josie Medina, the senior director of the OCPS Multilingual Services Department. Daremos inicio a nuestro programa honrando a seis hispanoamericanos reconocidos que han hecho contribuciones significativas a nuestro país. We're going to start our program by recognizing six well-known Hispanic Americans who have made significant contributions to our country. Sus logros demuestran cómo su esperanza para el futuro se basa en una herencia que dio forma a quienes son hoy. Their achievements demonstrate how their hope for the future is built on a heritage that shaped who they are today. Ruben Blades is the man in the signature pork pie hat who skillfully wears many hats. As a singer, composer, actor, and activist, he integrates multiple personalities. Ruben is well known for blending salsa and Latin jazz genres. Collaborating with Willy Colon, his album Siembra became the best-selling salsa record in history. For me, music is subversive. Because art is subversive, you change things, says Ruben. With a master's degree in international law from Harvard, he sought to make real change by running for president of Panama in 1994. Ruben later became his country's minister of tourism. With nine Grammy Awards, five Latin Grammys, and more than 50 acting credits in film, TV, and theater, Ruben Blades has done it all. Having sold 70 million records worldwide, musician, singer, and composer Juan Luis Guerra is among today's top-selling Latin artists. 
Juan has become a major celebrity in his native Dominican Republic by revitalizing traditional merengue sounds. Alongside major artists like Romeo Santos and Prince Royce, he also popularized bachata to world-renowned status what was once a song of working-class people living in the slums and countryside. Recognizing the inequities of Dominican society, Juan infused social justice themes in his music. Seeing the harsh working conditions of campesinos, subsistence farm workers, Juan wrote Ojalá que llueva café, made rain coffee, a song which became a number one hit in many Latin American countries. Juan has received 21 Latin Grammy Awards, including Producer of the Year. In 2007, his album La Llave de Mi Corazón swept the Latin Grammys. Anthony Romero's early childhood was spent with his Puerto Rican parents in a public housing project in the Bronx, New York. The first in his family to graduate high school, Anthony went on to earn his degree from Stanford University Law School. Before joining the ACLU as its sixth executive director, the first Latino and openly gay man to serve in that capacity, Anthony served as the Director of Human Rights and International Cooperation at the Ford Foundation. Speaking about his current role at the ACLU, Anthony said, My overarching goal is to promote a new generation of civil libertarians and civil rights activists. Today, true to that goal, Anthony promotes initiatives that focus on racial justice, religious freedom, reproductive freedom, criminal law reform, and LGBTQ plus rights. Carlos Delgado's stats are impressive. At least 30 home runs in 10 consecutive baseball seasons, 437 homers in all, giving him the highest home run total among all Puerto Rican players. In his 17 years in the major leagues, Carlos achieved a 280 batting average and was a two-time All-Star. Also known for his charity work, Carlos visits hospitals, contributes to improving Puerto Rico's public education system, and has started his own nonprofit organization called Extra Basis. Broadcast journalist Maria Elena Salinas has been called the voice of Hispanic America. Her intensive, inquisitive, and compassionate style became the hallmark of her 30 years as co-anchor of Univision's evening news broadcast. In 2019, Maria Elena became a contributor to CBS News, bringing an in-depth knowledge of the concerns and aspirations of the Latino community. Over the course of her career, Maria Elena has interviewed Latin American heads of state, rebel leaders, dictators, and every United States president since Jimmy Carter. Maria Elena is a founder of the National Association of Hispanic Journalists and sponsors scholarships for college students interested in Spanish news broadcasting. Gustavo Dudamel is driven by his belief that music has the power to transform lives, to inspire others, and change the world. He is arguably one of the world's most famous Venezuelans and one of the world's most prominent classical musicians. Gustavo is currently the chief conductor of the Simón Bolívar Symphony Orchestra. He is also the music director of the Paris Opera and the Los Angeles Philharmonic. Recognizing the value of music for our future, Gustavo has become a champion of youth music in his native Venezuela and around the world. His success has inspired the creation of El Sistema Orchestras, giving even the poorest students the chance to gain life skills, encouragement, and the discipline to succeed. Gustavo's Grammy Award-winning discography includes a total of 57 releases. Did you know? Everything from electric brakes for streetcars to the adjustable wrench in your toolbox, even to the clip that keeps your pens and pencils from falling out of your shirt pocket. That's part of the story of inventor Victor Ochoa. Born in Ojinaga, Mexico in 1850, Victor is one of the pioneers of flight. His Ochoa plane was a glider with folding bird-like wings. Victor was also a man of action. 
With a band of several hundred men, he attempted to overthrow the rule of Mexican President Porfirio Diaz. His insurrection was short-lived, and he escaped to Texas with a $50,000 bounty on his head. After a two-year imprisonment in New York, Victor's friend, President Theodore Roosevelt, suspended his sentence and restored his U.S. citizenship. Victor Ochoa, a man of inventiveness and spirit. And now you know. En la siguiente parte de nuestro programa, queremos presentarle cuatro organizaciones locales que han identificado las necesidades de nuestra comunidad y han respondido a esas necesidades con generosidad y un espíritu de participación. In the next portion of our program, we want to introduce you to four local organizations that have looked at the needs of our community and have responded to those needs with generosity and a spirit of involvement. While serving as the governor of the Mexican state of Chiapas, Juan Sabines Guerrero made improving the health, education, and economic conditions of families his top priority. Today, as the consul of the Mexican consulate in Orlando, Juan continues to put people and families first. The Orlando consulate addresses local community needs with providing educational preventive health services. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, it also developed its own vaccination efforts for the general public. The Consulate of Mexico was recently designated as a comprehensive care window for indigenous migrants, became the site of the educational orientation window, and was named by the City of Orlando and Orange County as a safe zone for the LGBTQ community. Co-founded by Elizabeth Valencia, Angels for Kids on Call is a multicultural behavioral health center located in Central Florida. Drawing on her experience in the healthcare industry and as a mother of a son with autism, Elizabeth assembled a team of professionals from a variety of cultures and backgrounds. Their mission is to deliver high quality, diverse, and inclusive mental health services in addition to behavioral and substance abuse support to underserved populations and their families. Their goal is to achieve timely, on-call delivery of care on a 24-7 basis. All the services are accompanied by Elizabeth's promise to treat the person, not just the condition. In 1995, Dr. Raul Fino left his native Cuba wanting to use his medical background in the United States. He first found work in Connecticut as a farmer picking blueberries. With a strong sense of purpose, he earned a master's degree in public health, worked in various medical settings, and ultimately serving as commissioner of the Connecticut Department of Public Health. In 2019, Raul brought his community health expertise to Orange County. When the COVID pandemic hit, he quickly became a well-recognized source of accurate information. Raul's bilingual skills have enabled him to win the trust of all in the Orange County community. His advice and counsel to businesses and community leaders have offered them guidance in navigating through the many challenges of these times. Did you know? Umberto Fernandez Moran, Venezuelan research scientist and inventor. How do you describe a man who has learned 12 different languages, invented the diamond scalpel based on superconducting technology, and used his discovery to aid in the development of electromagnetic lenses for electron microscopy? Born in 1924, Umberto Fernandez Moran traveled the world before returning to his native Venezuela. While there, he founded the Venezuelan Foundation for Neurological and Brain Studies. He also spent time in the United States teaching and analyzing moon rocks for NASA. While living in the United States, he was proposed to be nominated for the Nobel Prize, but he rejected the nomination because he would have had to embrace American citizenship. He refused, wanting to maintain his Venezuelan nationality. Umberto Fernandez Moran, a memorable Latin American scientist and citizen of the world. And now you know. En esta parte de nuestro programa, honraremos a tres personas de la Florida Central que han hecho un compromiso a sus vecinos y a su comunidad. Esperamos que encuentren inspiración genuina en sus historias. 
In this part of the program, we are going to recognize three Central Florida people who have made a personal commitment to their neighbors and their community. We hope you will find genuine inspiration in their stories. The Farm Worker Association of Florida is a grassroots organization dedicated to empowering Florida farm workers and to serving as an advocate for their rights. Jessica Ramirez is the association's Apopka area organizer. She says, we organize people to go visit politicians to talk about issues that affect our farm worker community, immigrant community, and low income community. In addition to serving as a liaison with local school systems, healthcare providers, and community partners, Jessica says her association provides lawyer referrals in cases of wage theft. Ensuring that individuals' dignity and worth are acknowledged, appreciated, and respected is the goal of Jessica Ramirez. Freddy Bultron is an OCPS employee who works in the school district's transportation department. He is also the founder and president of Without Borders Worldwide. The purpose of his nonprofit organization is to build supportive communities by reaching, equipping, and empowering immigrants through education, resources, and discipleship. Without Borders Worldwide empowers by providing instructional and educational opportunities for impoverished families so they can engage in technology, entrepreneurship, literacy, basic life skills, and other areas as needed. Every week, it also delivers food to feed deserving farm worker families. Freddy and his organization recently held a back to school event where backpacks, school supplies, and food were distributed to students and their families to set them up for success. Sami Jaiman Marrero is the founder, president, and CEO of Urbander, a business development and marketing company specializing in the Hispanic market and multicultural strategies. With a commitment to community service, Sami also launched the nonprofit SOS Orlando, whose mission is to provide necessary aid to recent arrivals from Latin American countries. Sami was also the co-founder of Proyecto Somos Orlando, a culturally competent community program for survivors and their families who were impacted by the Pulse nightclub tragedy. Commenting on things that really matter, Sami said, guard your relationships and reputation, and when you reach success, remember those who are still struggling. Hay algunos aspectos del patrimonio y la cultura que se expresan mejor en color e imágenes. Y hay algunas personas expertas en plasmar esos sentimientos en papel o en un lienzo. Y hay algunas de esas personas que son nuestros estudiantes de OCPS. There are some aspects of heritage and culture that are best expressed in color and images. And there are some people especially adept at putting those feelings on paper or canvas. And some of those people are our OCPS students.
Queremos concluir nuestro programa con un alegre tributo a nuestros empleados hispanos de OCPS. Todos dedicados a servir a los demás. Dedicados a proporcionar a los estudiantes una base en la cual desarrollan sus propias identidades individuales. Los honramos por todo lo que hacen. We want to conclude our program with a joyful tribute to our Hispanic OCPS employees. Every one of them committed to serving others. Committed to providing students a foundation upon which to develop their own individual identities. We honor them for all they do. fue nuestro programa, una celebración del Mes Nacional de la Herencia Hispana del 2021. También es una celebración de la esperanza, el tipo de esperanza que proviene de atesorar nuestra herencia, una herencia que es un regalo esencial que compartimos con nuestros estudiantes y entre nosotros. Gracias por sintonizarnos. That's our program, a celebration of the 2021 National Hispanic Heritage Month. It is also a celebration of hope, the kind of hope that comes from treasuring our heritage, a heritage that is an essential gift we share with our students and with each other. Thank you for watching.